everyone. This is Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. And I have been showing you in my recent videos how I diagnose QuickBooks online and finding uh, a lot of the problems and cleanup that uh, most of us run into when we take on a new client. So I'm continuing that series and now showing you how I diagnose the, the uh, profit and loss and specifically expenses section of the profit and loss. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am in um, my sample company, Modern Global, in the profit and loss report. And I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down to the expenses section. And the first thing that I do normally is I just I, I just take a look and see, uh, take a glance essentially, and look and see if anything stands out to me, whether it's something unreasonable, something a uh, you know, large negative amount, something that just doesn't make sense, something that maybe is not consistent with what I know about my client. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I'm just um, looking at each expense account and the amounts. And here's something, for example, miscellaneous um, is over $500. Normally, we'd like to keep that under $500 just to um, not really have a red flag for um, tax return purposes. So this is probably something that I would be looking at to see what is in that account and then uh, looking into reclassifying some of, those, some of those expenses. So I will click on the amount. And uh, we'll see, let's see, they have 840, yeah, here we go. See, we have $847 and it's for furniture. Okay, so it is not a miscellaneous expense, it is for furniture. So then what I would do, actually click on that transaction to open it. I would verify it, that it is furniture. And then I would change this either to office supplies or to uh, fixed assets depending on, on um, the policies that I have around capitalizing fixed assets. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go back. So I'm going to click back to report summary. This will take me directly to the profit and loss report where I was um, before. So we were looking at miscellaneous, so we'll continue looking down. We have office supplies and I see a fairly large uh, balance here for office decor. So I'll go ahead and click on that as well and review. Okay, so it says um, it's a reimbursement for office decor for the owner. This is probably something that I would look into unless I knew something about it already, but I might be a little questionable. Maybe it's not really office decor. Maybe it's the owner's personal expenses, so we do need to look into that. Okay, so we're back to the profit and loss. And paper expense seems a little high, perhaps for this company is reasonable. I won't take the time to look at that. Then we have payroll expenses, perhaps uh, here an opportunity to look at how the payroll is mapped because we have a lot of payroll expenses mapped to the payroll expenses uh, parent account. And then we have also employee wages as a sub account. So I would look in to see whether payroll it needs, to be, needs to be mapped correctly and mapped to the correct accounts. Okay, here we have personal expenses. And more than likely, these are personal expenses of the owner. Yes, so it is a purchase for Neiman Marcus where the owner um, uh, paid for um, personal expenses with company funds. Normally then we would not uh, take an expense for this. It would be recategorized as an owner draw or a distribution depending on the type of company that it is. Uh, we would then open this up. So we'll change it to owner draws. Okay, click back to report summary again. We're back to personal expenses. We'll keep going. Still looking at all the expenses. And here's one that you will see a lot. It is uncategorized expense. And we will see that nearly on every client who is not properly trained on using QuickBooks and in particular, the bank feeds in QuickBooks online. They will 
have some sort of uncategorized expense in their books. And that's because they just click add on every transaction in the bank feed without looking to see what the account category is that they're using in the bank feed. So this for sure has to be cleaned up. And many times we don't really know what these, these expenses are. And so we are needing to ask the client what they are in order to then clean them up. So typically uh, we'll put together a list of all of the uncategorized expenses and any other transactions that we have questions on, and we'll send that to the client and ask them to give us feedback so that um, we can then categorize them correctly. So here we have a check that needs to be categorized, um, perhaps some personal expenses, a gun club expense, um, probably uh, some sort of dues and subscriptions, and some unusual journal entries here that may need to be looked at as well. So the goal is there should be no uncategorized expenses. Okay, and we'll finish looking at the rest of the expenses. So we have utilities, and this one is a little unusual. It's higher than what I would expect, and it is maintenance expense. So once again, I will click, and I'll take a look and see what these are. So we do have some, some sort of service agreements that they've entered into, as well as some checks. So I would have to get more information on these and categorize them correctly. And if I, if I were doing accrual accounting, um, these two transactions, since they are um, expenses for a full year, might need to be recorded as prepaid expenses and then amortized. And then we'll go ahead also and just take a look at the other income and other expenses since we don't have a whole lot here. So we have an other income, interest income, that's probably okay. And then we have other expenses and we do see some reconciliation discrepancies and you may see reconciliation discrepancies either under other expenses or sometimes under expenses. Reconciliation discrepancies happen when you force the bank reconciliation to reconcile. So that means that you didn't get the reconciliation difference to be zero. There was some other amount and you forced it. You just said reconcile anyway, essentially, and then QuickBooks makes an adjustment. And that's a sign then that the bank reconciliation really is not done correctly and, and really the books aren't really reconciled. And you can see here that you have um, reconciliation discrepancies for three different months. So first of all, this is uh, something that I would address with my client to see what they're doing. Uh, perhaps they're not, they don't really know how to reconcile the books. Perhaps they're not entering every transaction and then they don't know what to do. So they just go ahead and force the reconciliation. And I would need to consider whether I would um, redo the reconciliations depending on the amounts um, that we see in reconciliation discrepancies. But my first uh, approach is to talk to the client and to see what's going on. Okay, I'll show you something else that I do real quick. When I am reviewing my client's profit and loss report, I also I will look not only at um, the period that I'm looking at, but I will also review um, and compare columns month by month. So let me show you how I do that. So let's say that I am reviewing December of 2021, but I want to compare that month against other months. So what I'll do is normally I'll, I'll look at um, maybe three, four months of history. So I'll just go ahead and uh, enter from October 1 through December 31 of 2021 and change the display columns to months. Click Run Report. And now I can see the activity month by month. And many times I will just select Collapse so I can see it more condensed. And then I'll start comparing amounts to see if I see anything that is not consistent from, from one month to another. So for example, job expenses uh, has been decreasing in the past uh, few months. So that might be something that I would look at and see if that uh, makes sense and is consistent with what's going on with the business. Let's see, there was an increase in payroll expenses in December. And let's assume that they paid bonuses in December. That makes sense. I'll move on. And as we talked about before, there was um, they had some personal expenses in December. 
Um, and of course, that has to be uh, recorded as an owner draw or a distribution. And we already talked about uncategorized expenses and also talked about reconciliation discrepancies. So this is just a quick way and actually what we use at BM Wasek to review our clients' books um, for reasonableness. Okay, so that concludes my uh, review of the uh, expense section of the profit and loss report. Make sure you check out the description box below for uh, lots of free goodies that I have for you, including the Virtual Bookkeepers Toolbox. If this content is helping you, make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel so you can get all of my latest videos. I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. Bye.